Edward's Day Out Once upon a time there was a little engine called Edward. He lived in a shed with five other engines. They were all bigger than Edward and boasted about it. They said, The driver won't choose you again. He wants big, strong engines like us. Edward hadn't been out for a long time and he began to feel sad. Just then, the driver and fireman came along to start work. The driver looked at Edward and said, What's the matter? Are you feeling sad? Hmm? Would you like to come out today? Hmm? And Edward said, Oh, yes, please. So the fireman lit the fire and made a nice lot of steam. Then the driver pulled the lever and Edward puffed away. And he blew his whistle. Look at me. 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 The other engines were very cross at being left behind. And away went Edward to get some coaches. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. At last, Edward found the coaches and they said, Oh, please be careful, Edward. Don't bump and bang us like the other engines do. So Edward came up to the coaches very, very gently. <whistles> and the shunter fastened the coupling. The coaches were very pleased. Thank you, Edward. That was kind. We are glad you're taking us today. Then they went to the station where the people were waiting. Here we are, here we are, here we are, here we are, here we are. Come along, get in quickly, please. So the people got in quickly, and Edward waited happily for the guard to blow his whistle and wave his green flag. He waited and waited, and there was no whistle and no green flag. Edward was getting anxious. <whistles> Where is that guard? The driver and fireman asked the station master. Um, have you seen the guard? Hmm? No. They asked the porter. Uh, have you seen the guard? Uh, yes, last night. Edward began to get cross. Are we ever going to start? Just then, a little boy shouted, Here he comes! And there the guard was, running down the hill, with his flags in one hand and a sandwich in the other. He ran onto the platform, blew his whistle, and jumped into his van. Edward puffed off. Here we go. Shh, shh. Here we go. Shh. Here we go, shh, shh, here we go, shh, shh, here we go, shh, shh. He did have a happy day. All the children ran to wave as he went past, and he met old friends at all the stations. He worked so hard that the driver promised to take him out again next day. And he told the other engines in the shed that night, I'm going out again tomorrow. What do you think of that, hmm? But he didn't hear what they thought, for he was so tired and happy that he fell asleep at once. Edward and Gordon One of the engines in Edward's shed was called Gordon. He was very big and very proud. You watch me this afternoon, little Edward. When I rush through with the express, that'll be a splendid sight for you. 
Just then, his driver pulled the lever. Goodbye, little Edward. Look out for me this afternoon. Goodbye, little Edward. Edward went off too to do some shunting. Edward liked shunting. It was fun playing with trucks. He would come up quietly and give them a quick pull, and the trucks would scream out, "Oh, oh, 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 oh!" Whatever's happening. Then Edward would stop quickly, and the silly trucks would bump into each other. Oh, 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 oh. Oh! Edward pushed them until they were running nicely, and when they weren't expecting it, he would stop. One of them would be sure to run onto the other line. Edward played till there were no more trucks. Then he stopped to rest. Presently, he heard a whistle, <whistles> and Gordon came puffing along, very slowly. And very crossly, <whistles> instead of nice shining coaches, he was pulling a lot of very dirty coal trucks. A goods train, a goods train. The shame of it. The shame of it. The shame of it! Oh dear! Oh dear! He went slowly through with the trucks clattering and banging behind him. Edward laughed, and went to find some more trucks. Soon afterwards, a porter came and spoke to Edward's driver. Yeah, Gordon can't get up the hill. Will you take Edward and push him, please? They found Gordon halfway up the hill, and he was very cross. His driver and fireman were talking to him severely. You're not trying, Gordon. You're not trying at all. And Gordon said, "I can't do it. I can't do it." The noisy trucks hold an engine back so. If there were coaches now, clean, sensible things that come quietly, that would be different. Edward's driver came up. Yer,、yeah. we've come to push you. Oh, it's no use at all. Well, you wait and see. They brought the train back to the bottom of the hill. Edward came up behind the brake van. <whistles> I'm ready. <whistles> It's no good. The guard blew his whistle, and they pulled and pushed as hard as they could. Gordon pulled. I can't shh, do it. Shh, I can't shh, do it. Edward pushed. I will do it. I will do it. I can't do it. I will do it. Edward pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could, and almost before he realised it, Gordon found himself at the top of the hill. I've done it! I've done it! I've done it! And he forgot all about Edward pushing behind. He didn't wait to say thank you, but ran on so fast that he passed two stations before his driver could make him stop. Edward had pushed so hard that when he got to the top, he was out of breath. Gordon ran on so fast that Edward was left behind. The guard waved and waved, but Edward couldn't catch up. He ran on to the next station, 
and there the driver and fireman said they were very pleased with him. The fireman gave him a nice long drink. Mm. The Sad Story of Henry Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and never came out again. The engine's name was Henry. His driver and fireman argued with him, but he wouldn't move. He said, No, no, I shan't come out so that the rain will spoil my lovely green paint with red stripes. No. The guard blew his whistle till he had no more breath and waved his flags till his arms ached. But Henry stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. Go away. Go away. I'm not going to spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes for you. The passengers came and argued too. But Henry would not move. No! No! Leave me alone. A fat director who was on the train told the guard to get a rope. Um, fetch a rope, will you? That's right. Now, Henry, we will pull you out. But Henry only blew steam at him and made him wet. Leave me alone. They hooked the rope on and all pulled except the fat director. Um, my doctor has forbidden me to pull, don't you know? They pulled and pulled and pulled. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Then they tried pushing from the other end. The fat director said, One, a two, a three, push! But he didn't help himself. He said, My doctor has uh, forbidden me to push. They pushed and pushed and pushed. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last, another train came. The guard waved his red flag and stopped it. The two engine drivers, the two firemen and the two guards went and argued with Henry. Look, Henry, it's stopped raining. Yes, but it'll begin again soon. And what would become of my green paint with red stripes then? Mm -hmm. So they brought the other engine up, and it pushed and puffed. <whistles> and puffed and pushed. <whistles> as hard as ever it could. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. So they gave it up, and the fat director told Henry, We shall leave you there for always and always and always. They cut a new tunnel through the hill, they took up the old rails, and they built a big brick wall in front of Henry. Now Henry can't get out and he watches the trains rushing through the new tunnel. He's very sad because no one will ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes again. Edward, Gordon and Henry Edward and Gordon often went through the tunnel where Henry was shut up. Edward would say, <coughs> Hello! And Gordon would say, <coughs> So you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out, 
Soot and dirt from the tunnel roof had spoiled his lovely green paint and red stripes. He was cold and unhappy and wanted to come out and pull trains too. Gordon always pulled the express. He was proud of being the only engine strong enough to do it. There were many heavy coaches full of important people like the fat director who'd punished Henry. Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Faster, 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 faster. Faster, 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 faster. Faster, 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 faster. And the coaches went. Gordon could see Henry's tunnel in front, and he thought to himself, in a minute, I'll just go <laughs> at Henry and rush through and out into the open again. Closer and closer he came. He was almost there. <laughs> When oh dear, oh what's happened? <laughs> Gordon was in a cloud of steam and going slower and slower. Sure, sure, yes. His driver stopped the train. Oh. What has happened to me? Oh, oh, I feel so weak. And the driver said, You've burst your safety valve. You can't pull the train any more. Oh, dear. And we were going so nicely, too. Look at Henry laughing at me. Gordon made a face at Henry and blew smoke at him. Stop it. Everybody got out and came to see Gordon. The fat director said, Hmm, yes, I never liked these big engines. Always going wrong. Send for another engine at once. While the guard went to find one, they uncoupled Gordon and ran him onto a siding out of the way. The only engine left in the shed was Edward. Um, Edward... Gordon isn't feeling very well. Will you come and pull his coaches for him? Well, I'll try. Gordon saw Edward coming. Oh, he's no use. Edward can't pull a train. Edward puffed and pulled and pulled and puffed. But he couldn't move the heavy coaches. I told you so. Why not let Henry try? Hmm? And the fat director said, All right, I will. Um, Henry, uh, will you help pull this train? And Henry was delighted. Oh, yes, uh, certainly. Uh, only do please. So Gordon's driver and fireman lit his fire. Some plate layers broke down the wall and put back the rails. And when he had steam up, Henry puffed out. He was dirty. His boiler was black and he was covered with cobwebs. Oh, shh, oh, shh, I'm so stiff. Shh, I'm so stiff. You'd better have a run and ease your joints and find a turntable. Henry came back feeling much better, and they put him in front. Edward said, I'm ready. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> Pull hard. <laughs> Pull hard. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> Pull hard. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> the heavy coaches jerked and began to move, slowly at first, then faster and faster. We've done it together. We've done it together. We've done it together. We've done it together. Hooray, you've done it. Hooray, you've done it. Hooray, you've done it. All the passengers were so excited, the fat director leaned out of the window to wave to Edward and Henry, but the train was going so fast that his hat blew off into a field. 
where a goat ate it for his tea. They never stopped till they came to the big station at the end of the line. The passengers all got out and said thank you, and the fat director promised Henry a new coat of paint. Would you like blue and red, hmm? Oh, yes, please. Then I'll be like Edward and Gordon. That will be nice.